YouTube. It's happening on the 30th of January, and um, I got paid. Yay! Um, I haven't did I haven't filmed any other videos this week because I have been quite addicted to Clash of Clans, which I recently downloaded onto my phone. So I've been playing that quite a bit. But today I'm doing meal prep. I was thinking a lot about different meal prep ideas during the course of the week, and I decided I would try out bibimbap meal prep. So that's like a Korean rice dish with all of these vegetable toppings and some um, meat as well. So I'm going to check it out, um, see how it works and I will film it and show you what I'm doing. So I managed to get some beef at the farmer's market which I'm just frying up in a pan. Um, this is ground steak. It smells like really really good and I'm just frying that in its own fat so there's no extra fat in there. Um, and then I got some shiitake mushrooms, which I'm just going to chop up and fry up and put that on top of my rice. I got some kale. Kale was on offer at Waitrose. Look at that. 10p for kale. Isn't that fucking amazing? I got some carrots. I got some peppers. And I got some courgettes. So this is going to be my bibimbap top. I couldn't quite decide how to do the egg for the bibimbap, so I'm going to try it out a few ways. I'm going to do um, a couple of days of fried eggs, because I don't really like fried eggs in the fridge, it, like or in the microwave to be fair, like it kind of makes it a bit rubbery. So I'm only going to do two days of fried eggs, and then I'm going to do um, two days of soft boiled eggs. So I'm going to try that out. And so this is how my bibimbap's progressing. I got my beef on the side there. Um, I just seasoned it with a little bit of salt and I've got some red onions and some chives and I'm just going to put a bit of low sodium soy sauce over my rice for a little bit of seasoning. If you've got some fresh ginger, I would also put that in now. Da -da. Mm. Okay, and then over here we have some mushrooms that are being fried up that will also go into. So for the carrots, I'm doing them raw and I have this um, julienne grater which makes these lovely strips and you just grate the carrots and this is what you end up with. So I'm doing quite a lot of carrots and um, I like quite sour taste so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some white wine vinegar in there with a little bit of um, mustard seeds and quite a bit of salt and that will kind of pickle it so it will be a nice addition um, both colour wise and taste wise. So here we have it. I fried off some kale and I also chopped up some onions and chopped up some red peppers which are raw, some courgettes which are raw and then I added in the carrots and this is what we have for my meal prep bibimbap. I added one fried egg so you can see what the final bibimbap is supposed to look like and the whole idea is that you break open that egg and you mix it all around and eat the deliciousness. Um, I decided I'm probably going to do a fried egg each morning. Um, I might try one day where I put in a raw egg since these are all going to go into the microwave anyways and see how that works out. But yay! Looks delicious doesn't it? So colourful. Hi YouTube, it's Sunday the 7th of February, um, for some reason I forgot to upload last week's video so I'm just going to do another one and upload them both together. Um, we had a few developments, um, one of the things is that my um, sink is now fixed so I can cook like real food which is amazing um, and the other thing is that unfortunately I uh, injured my back on Friday um, trying to move the fridge while they <laughs> While the plumber was trying to fix the kitchen and uh, my back has been really sore and I haven't really been able to like move around much um, I missed my workout today unfortunately and I don't think I'm going to be working out um, this week I didn't think I was going to be working out very much this week anyway since I'm going to be going to Paris so 
Um, since I'm not going to be at home slash working out slash working very much over the next week, I didn't think I needed a full meal prep. But I still wanted to prep some food, so I had something easy to make um, and easy to eat for lunchtime at work that was still cheap and nutritious. And one of the things I've been really craving um, but couldn't really figure out a way to do um, without a functioning sink is to make chicken soup. So that's what I'm going to do today. I make an awesome chicken soup so um, with really good broth and you could you could have the broth by itself but I like to use like the chicken and the broth together um, and make quite a few meals out of this one whole chicken so I'm just going to show you what I'm doing and um, let me know if you've got any thoughts or questions or if you want me to make any more videos um, it's been very cooking re related recently and food related so I'll try to make some other videos um, Hopefully when I get back well into the gym, I can post a few workouts. I'm going to be going to a new gym, so I'm really looking forward to that. It's gym box in Victoria, so I'll probably do a few um, films there. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be quite empty in the first few weeks while I'm still trying to get some customers, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so anyways, enough of me um, blabbering on. I'm going to start cooking this um, chicken soup. I'm just going to talk prep for a little bit. I think it's really important to prep all your ingredients before you start cooking. So um, I'll just go through a little bit of my prep. So first of all, over here, I have a bucket full of soapy water. This makes the cleaning so much easier while you're cooking and just means you can get things done. And then I've taken out all my ingredients that I'm going to use for the chicken soup that I'm making. And I've also um, taking a knife sharpener out and I'm just going to sharpen my knife. These things are awesome. Um, it's really important to have a sharp knife, especially if you're going to do what I'm about to do, which is um, I'm going to make chicken soup with the, the main body of the chicken and the breast and also the the wings and then I'm going to remove the, the legs and I'm going to debone them and I'm going to um, cook them quite quickly and they'll act as like my lunch for for the week so i've got like some some lunch for the week and i've got a soup with like delicious with like the breast meat as well so i'll show you a little bit about how i do that and what the final result looks like but in order for me to do all that butchering to the chicken i need a sharp knife so i'm going to sharpen my knife up um, a little bit about my chicken, it's a free range chicken that I got from the farmer's market. As you can see it's not super pricey, um, but it's also not the cheapest chicken around either. And I think, you know, from the farmer's market it's good quality. They normally provide you with giblets, although I don't think they did this time around. Right, so I hope you can hear me alright. Um, I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do with this chicken. So. Um, this is it. My knife is sharpened and I cleaned it and dried it so there's no nasty bits on it. So there's no giblets and I haven't done anything to it yet and it's just come out of the fridge so it hasn't been sitting around. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the legs because I'm going to be using that for something different. So um, to remove the legs you need to take your knife and there's this like gap between the legs and the the main breast joint and that's where you need to put your knife and if your knife's sharp if you just do a slight cut through the skin it's there and then you can see like what you're doing so you do that and then I'm turning it around if I lift it up like that hopefully you can see there's a gap there and then I just keep going around basically until it's completely separated now here you can just use brute force, um, which is what I'll show you, or you can try to cut it out. But the way I like to do it is just bend, separate the thigh bone from the um, breast bone by holding down on the breast and then just cracking it there. And then you see the bone's exposed and all you need to do now is just cut the meat away from that bone area. So I'm doing like small strokes, I'm pulling away at it so that it's like basically using gravity. I'm not pressing down on there. And then we have like our leg meat separated from our main chicken.
Okay, so now I've got this um, chicken and I've got two thighs. I'm just gonna put the thighs to one side for a moment because I'll deal with them in a minute. And for this, I just, this is my pot, okay? And currently if I try to put this in here, it's like sticking out the edge. So I'm just gonna trim it down a little bit um, so that it makes it easier for later and so that it fits into my pot. So it, this can also be used if you just wanna separate your chicken into parts and use them for different things, you can also use this method. So the first thing is, I'm going to remove um, this, the wing section, you know, the bit with the two bones, not the, the drumstick type bit of the wing. And again, with this, you can just use brute force and separate them, but when you, are pulling it apart, like you know when you're eating chicken wings and you want to separate the two of them, um, there's this bit of cartilage and when you pull them, like the, the whiteness of that cartilage sticks out in the skin and that's where you want to put your knife. So I'm just putting it in there and then I can give it a little crack and just make sure because the knife that I'm using is quite, it's quite flexible, you know, it's really good for um, carving through meat and fish and stuff like that but it's not going to cut through bone i don't think there's very many knives that are going to cut through bone apart from maybe chinese cleaver so you want to try when you're butchering to avoid cutting through bone and find the joints of like meat and just think like when you're when you're eating it like where would you normally find that joint and i would really suggest like if you're new to butchering chicken try eating meat on the bone first um, and then feel it like when you're eating it, like see how the bones are connected together and then you have a much better understanding of the chicken. So now I've got this end piece. Um, I'm probably not gonna eat this. This is just going to be flavoring my stock. So I'm putting that in the pot and leaving that as it is. I'll just do the same on the other side. So this end bit is the butt. We don't really want to eat that, but it's quite fatty and um, so some people use it for flavorings and like in certain parts of Asia, you can get chicken butts like deep fried um, and Philippines, they like to eat it a lot. And um, so, it, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Like no actual crap has come out of here, but it's just um, like really fatty. I'm gonna dispose of that. Um, now, again, I'm still having this problem where I can't fit this into my pot, so I'm just going to um, try to separate the back piece. Um, and I do that again just by using brute force. There's this gap here in the center where the back can normally crack open, and that's what I'm doing. So I just crack that, um, and then just using my knife to make sure that it's all separated. There we go. Now this is like the crown of the chicken. So like, this would be quite good for like roasting. You could just use all of this and like put it, roast it up, like tie the little um, drumstick things together, put some butter over here and roast this. And this will be really nice for like a Sunday lunch. Um, and it actually like this cr crown like this because of all of that butchery effort that we just went into will probably cost as much as or more than a whole chicken. I got this chicken for eight pounds and you can normally get crowns for like 10 pounds. So if you know how to do butchery yourself, you can save quite a bit of money. Okay, so we have this crown section and there's quite a lot of skin in here that's just not going to be very nice after it's, um, it's cooked up. So I'm going to remove the skin and I'm going to cook it and then that would be a good garnish for like if you have crispy skin um, with my soup it adds a little bit of texture a little bit of extra flavor it's a bit of extra umami so at the back here there's this the skin still joined up um, maybe when you um, had done this part of it your skin may not be joined up but mine is so I'm just gonna slightly cut through that just to separate the skin and then then it's easily separatable. The skin actually comes off really easily. You just have to pull it off. So I'm gonna start off um, at the end here. Or maybe I'll start off on this side.
And now this fits into my pot. Okay, with the skin. So the way to get crispy skin um, is to flatten it out as much as possible onto a, um, a tray. So I'm just gonna cut it into different sections. I know this is icky, but you know, crispy skin is delicious. And I prefer to cut these squares and then put this onto um, a, a foiled tray and or you can just put it onto a regular baking sheet, doesn't make a difference. Um, you don't need to put fat onto it because it's already got quite a lot of fat itself. But just make sure when you put it on, it's flat, completely flat. So here it is, the chicken skin on the tray. I'm just going to salt and pepper it, but I'll show you what I'm going to do. You just take another piece of foil and you lay it on top of the chicken. And then you take another flat tray and you lay that on top and then you squeeze down. Like my trays don't fit perfectly into each other, but if you do have trays that do, like if you've got two identical trays, that would be perfect. But the whole idea here is, um, you know, that the, the chicken is kept flat while it's cooking. So it's going to be like this, and then I'll put it underneath the grill setting in the oven, and that heat will penetrate through this pan, through the foil, and it will cook that chicken. Seriously, it works. Um, I'll show you how I do that. Here's like where I'm at with my soup. I chopped up some um, bits of carrot in here. They're quite large, so I can fish them out later. I like to um, prepare the carrots for the, for the actual broth making of the soup separately from the carrots for the eating part of the soup. Um, and then I seasoned it. I've also got some celery leaves, um, some, some onions. I don't know why my video keeps cutting out like that. That's quite odd. Um, I squeezed some lemon over the breast and I'm also using um, black peppercorns, bay leaf and green cardamom. It's, um, there's an Egyptian recipe that uses green cardamom in chicken soup and I quite like the flavour of it so I'm putting it in this chicken soup this time around. So I'm just pouring some water in and I'm going to put enough water so that it comes, it's just coating the chicken breast. I'll show you where. I probably need a much bigger pan for this, <laughs> but this is my biggest saucepan and it's not quite fitting. This is why I opt for like um, a smaller chicken for this kind of thing. So anyways, so I'm actually, I'm going to put the heat on high just so the water starts to get hot. But the point is that you don't want to boil the water. You just want to um, keep it, like don't have it over boiling, just have it like totting away, simmering. Um, for about an hour and that will make a really succulent chicken breast as well. Here's the progress of my chicken soup. Um, it's been cooking for about an hour, probably closer to an hour and 20 minutes because I got distracted. Um, but this is the, the, the vegetables and I'm just going to drain this out, remove all the vegetables and then put the stock back on so that can reduce down. Um, in terms of the um, breast meat I took that out already I let it cool down and now I'm just going to um, remove the breast meat from here and then that will go into the bulk of my my soup when I serve it up so here's the um, stock that I have um, without the vegetables in um, it's quite cloudy which is good good sign I really like the color um, it shows it's got um, a good amount of fat in it which is what we want um, that means it's got quite a lot of collagen in which is really good for you um, it smells amazing it smells of celery and like really good vegetables now you can just stop here and this will be like a rich um, stock that you can use for like um, regular cooking but I'm going to as I mentioned before I'm going to simmer this down and reduce it a bit more so it's like constant concentrated chicken soup. So we're at 1.5 litres out of this 3 litre pot. Um, I'm going to simmer it down until that gets to 1 litre um, and then my boyfriend and I will have half a litre of chicken soup each. So here's my chicken soup. I let it simmer down um, quite a bit and then I put in the shredded breast meat so that it could heat up. 
and then I chopped up some carrots to garnish and that is the crispy chicken skin to garnish on top as well. I'm so hungry right now, I need to go and eat this. Hope you enjoyed, please subscribe and like.